guys, this is Cooper MTG. Um, so I'm gonna do a Mythic Rare update right now because we haven't actually had one of these in a while, and we actually have gotten a bunch of new Mythics. So yeah, pretty cool. So here we actually have our Johnny Color of Pride. You can see him right up here. Focus. There he is. Um. Needs three mana, two colorless, one white. Is plus one is put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. It's minus three is target creature gains flying in double strike until end of turn. It's minus eight is put an XX white cat creature token onto the battlefield where X is your total life. And I really like that. That's pretty good. But even like along with Sarah Avatar right there, it's really one of those things that you're probably going to want to put in a life deck because life decks, that's how it really works. And if you can hear sound in the background, that be that mean that's because um, George is playing the new M15 Magic game. Um. Okay. So next card we have here, Soul of Chandelar. That's the place where Chandra came from, if I'm not mistaken. Focus. Sorry, that's right. Aaron. Okay, so it's four colorless, two red. Look at that, that's pretty cool. First strike, three colorless, two red. Soul of Chandler deals three damage. Target player and three damage up to one target huge that player's control. I really like that. I think that's pretty cool because it's a red burn card and woo, red burn stuff. And then it, I kind of want to say it's a her, but... Its other ability is three colorless, two red exile, soul of chandelier from your graveyard. Soul of chandelier deals three damage to target player and three damage to target creature that player controls. And that's cool and fun and awesome and yay. Chandra place. Also it is first strike. Six six first strike. Yay. Cool. Like it. Um, I'm actually thinking, uh, how about I would talk which deck this would go on. And I'd really say burn deck. Burn deck definitely. Yeah. Burn deck. Woo! Cool. Okay, so moving on, we have our Sarkin Vol. Big, important dude, we just got him. Pretty cool. Hey guys, sorry I'm back. You probably didn't notice it, but the camera did the thing. It's really weird, it just keeps running out of batteries. Anyways, as I was saying, pretty important card, like it, Sarkin Vol. Two colorless, one red, one green. Um, it's plus one is creatures you control, get plus one, plus one, and gain haste until end of turn. That's that's pretty good. Pretty freaking good. I mean, so you just, like, Balefire Dragon. We were talking about it earlier in our red review. If it had haste, that would be great. Haste. And then you have Sarkin Volat here. Give it haste. Boom. Really good. 7-7 seven, seven haste. And then it's minus 2 is gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. That's pretty good as well, because... Say your opponent just gets out their Primordial, or maybe a couple turns in here, has Primordial Hydra. They cast, it's a 17, no, that's a 32-32. Bring this out, mine, you win, pretty much. And then you have the um, minus 6, put 5 four, four red dragon creature tokens sort of flying into play. I really like this card. It's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And also the interesting thing about this was I was talking about earlier, although I didn't actually talk about it that much because I got interrupted by the camera. Uh, I just said that really fast. Um, is that he's going to be in cons, which is actually out. Oh. He's from cons or wherever cons takes place, which is going to be the next thing after M15. So I thought that was pretty cool. Also, sneak preview about cons. All the dragons are going to be dead. That's right, they're all dead. What you've got to say about that, dragon-loving hippies? Oh, that's... I apologize, that was very rude. Alright, anyways, we have... Exynos. Yeah, Exynos, the Reveler. Xenagos, the Reveler. Thank you for correcting me. Come on, load. Okay, so there's plus one. There he is. One green, one red, two colorless. Is 
Plus one is that X mana in any combination of red and or green to your mana pool where X is the number of creatures you control. If zero is put a 2-2 two, two red and green satire creature token with haste onto the battlefield. And this minus six is exile the top seven cards of your library. You may put any number of creature and or land cards from among them onto the battlefield. I like this guy. Look, he's pooping out all creatures, like pooping out all the satires. And then he then he gets lands from for all that. And then finally, after you read that again, and he may... yeah. So that's like, oh, top seven go away. And then I have out my. Three other mythics there. Whoa! Random circumstance. Anyway. Pretty cool. I, uh, they're definitely better red and green cards in my opinion. Um, but, you know, maybe someone can do something good with them. Mm, you never know. And anyways, we're moving on. Alright. Avenger Zendikar. Pretty cool dude. Avengers Endicar. Got him from Commander. Five colorless, two green. When Avengers of Zendikar enters the battlefield, put a zero one green plant creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. I like that. I think that's cool. And then his landfall ability is whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one on each plant creature you control. That's really cool because you're kind of like building up a death army. I think this would be great in a mono green deck. Definitely, because then you'd have seven of the one ones. Possibly even more. Depending on when you get them out. And that's just cool. And also, he's Zendikar, and I love Zendikar. Zendikar's awesome. It's all the landy stuff. And it's also where the new Nissa, or where Nissa is from. Am I pronouncing that right? Nissa? How do you pronounce it? Well, that's where it says whatever. She's not from there, but that is how you pronounce her name. Now we have our Rampaging Baloths. It's four colorless, one green, two green. It's Trample. Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token onto the battlefield. 6-6. Six, six. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Avengers Endicar. 5-5. And that's really cool. It's another one of those pooping out creatures. So Avenger of Zendikar, Rampaging Baloths, they go together in the whole poopy creature cycle and make lovely poopy creature babies. <laughs> that's creepy. I'll stop now. But anyways, yeah. Like I said, poopy creature babies. And then we got Glissa the Traitor from Scars from Mirrodin. I think that's right. Let's wait it for... She looks pretty cool. Um... One black, two green. It's coming into focus. Focus here. Focus. Uh, first strike, death touch. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. She's at 3 3. And remember, this was back when Scars of Mirrodin, there was all that artifact stuff, so then that would have been really good. And now it still is pretty good because of 3 3 first strike death touch. Wow. And then you know when you get your artifacts back, so take that, all those people who destroy artifacts, and good artifact decks are awesome. Woo! Yeah. Pretty cool. Moving on, we got our Vraska. Right there. You may or may not have noticed, but in our Ravnica video, that's where we got her. I'm waiting for this to focus real quickly. She's one black, one green, three colorless. I think she starts out with five. Her plus one is until your next turn. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to Vraska, the unseen, destroy that creature. Her minus three is destroy target non-land permanent. I like that. I think that's really it's like, oh, you just got out your mythic? Oh, well, guess what? Nope. And then her minus seven is put three. One, one black assassin creature tokens onto the battlefield. Whenever, with whenever this creature damage, deals damage, combat, combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. I'm a little tongue tied here. And that's really good if you put in the new blue card for a conspiracy. Came out, I know it's a little separate thing, but um, it gives target creature land, 
land walk of any color of your choice. And that's pretty cool. Also, we got a Jared. I'm going to show him here for a second. He's like our other Jared. Let's wait for it to focus. There you see him, yeah. That's him. <sighs> Gotta take a deep breath. There's so many new cards. Is there one on this page? No, there isn't. Actually, I'm wrong. We have Phage the Untouchable. He's, she is, three colorless, four black. Probably only good in a mono black deck. Um, focus on words now, please. It's like a book. Take a look. It's in a book. Okay, so when Phage the Untouchable enters the battlefield, if it was cast, if it wasn't cast, if you didn't cast it from your hand, you lose the game. And whenever Phage deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature. It can't be regenerated. When Phage deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game, and she's a 4-4. And then that's pretty much like the assassin stuff. Yay, assassin stuff. Killy people. Let me just go back and check something. No, 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 no. Yep. Anything. Sorry, I'm a little unorganized, as you can tell. Oh, here's a bunch of them. Ashiok. Phoenix. Actually, that's only two. That's not a lot. <laughs> but anyways, so we got Phoenix, God of Deception. Indestructible as long as your devotion to blue and black is less than seven. Phoenix isn't a creature. Let me try and get a focus on this hat. Come on, focus, baby. Okay, there we go. So, and this ability is creature control of tap target player puts the top seven cards, top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard where X is this creature's toughness. That's pretty good, especially since Phoenix is a 4 7. <laughs> like right right there, look at that. 4 7. Each turn, top seven cards of your library into your graveyard. That's really great with the Jace Memory Adapter where zero is target player puts the top. 10 cards of his library into his graveyard. So I think that's cool. Yeah, Phoenix. Woo, and he's a god. Yay, although he's from a poopy set of gods. Yeah. And then we have Ashiok, Nightmare Weaver. One colorless. Actually, that's more than one, isn't it? Load. Come on, please. Okay, yeah, one colorless, one blue, one black. His plus one is... Exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. I think that's cool. Not even not even graveyard, just exile them. It's minus six. Is put a creature card with converted mana cost X. Exile by Ashiok Nightmare Weaver onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a nightmare in, in addition to other types. And that's cool because you can like exile their whatever, whatever. Like So they you're exiling the top cards. And then they get their mix up, mythic exiled. And then you're just like, oh, I'll take that. That's really cool. And then his minus and his XL all cards from all opponents' hands and graveyards. So along with his ability, it's just like everything's gone, and now I get it all. <laughs> but I never really play it, and it kind of I don't know how to feel about it. It's just eh. it's like XL stuff. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, the thing totally unfocused. Uh, why does this keep happening to me? All right. Hey. Psst, camera, camera loud, please. Darn, makes me sound weird. All right, and then we got our Mystic Enforcer, which we got from. Finally adjusts, and then I bring the thing in, and it freaks out. Mystic Enforcer, it's two colorless, one green, one white. And this is back from Time Shifter. And if you notice, symbol's actually purple. And it looks pretty cool. This ability is protection from black, which is always good. Like, no, black can't hurt me. 
And then use Threshold, which I have never heard before until we got this card. Mystic Enforcer gets plus three, plus three, and has flying as long as eight. Seven or more cards are in your graveyard, which is pretty, pretty good, especially in a green and white deck. Something with flying, yeah. I'm, I'm all for this card. I would like more of these. Yeah, I might get more of those. Pretty cool. And then we have Mirari's Lake. Three colorless, one green, one white. Um, creatures you control gain plus one, plus one. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool for any type that land produced. So it's pretty much, oh yeah, I tap this and then I get another mana from this land to use. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. And we're going to move on on Anything on this page? Here we go. Starting off, we have our Lightning Angel, another one of the old ones we had. It's red, white, and blue, and one colorless. It has Flying, Vigilance, Haste. It's a 3-4. Nothing else much to it, and it's got the purple time shifter symbol. Eh, it's okay, Mythic. If it even is a mythic, we don't know what the purple symbol means. It could be like ultra mythic legendary thingy of poop death. We don't know. And we have Crufix, God of Horizons, three colorless, one green, one blue. If it doesn't load, I will kill this thing. This camera's been ticking me off all day. It's a 4 7, just like our other guy. Why? Why, camera? Why? Indestructible like the other gods. As you, as long as your devotion to green and blue is less than seven, he isn't a creature. His ability is if unused mana would it empty from your mana pool, that mana becomes colorless instead. I have no idea what that means. Absolutely none. I'm, I'm not even sure how to use this card. I'm just gonna, you know. Whoa, he's a god, whatever. <laughs> Don't know how to use him. It's like a mm, fart. And we have our Arachdos' Return, which you probably also know that we got in our Ravnica thing, because it's Arachdos. And it's X colorless, one black, one green. Arachdos' Return deals X damage to target opponent. That opponent discards X cards. That's good for red and black. I never really thought red and black would be discarding. I thought maybe red and blue, black and blue, but, you know, red and black. That discards a card can't be all bad. So yeah. Wow. Pretty cool. Oh wow, I just realized something actually. Hold on one second. <sighs> we have a ton. You know what? Since these are all commander cards, I'm just going to show them really quickly. Because they aren't that important, really. They're like, oh, wow, commander, whatever. Woo. So, because they're the really boring commander cards, anyways. So we have Bosh, Scary Dirt, Dude. Hmm. There, Martha, Will of the Wild here. Let me hold this so until it focuses so you can see what it is. Focus camera, please just focus. For once in your life, focus. <sighs> there. Gaji honored one. Meryl the Amnia. And then the Shatter King Brothers, my personal favorite out of all of them, which are all pretty poopy except this one. Yay! I'll pause it. There. Yeah. Pause it and look. I'm not reading these. <sighs> they have so much words on them. It's too many for my simple celebrial cortex. Celebrial? Cerebral. Cerebral. Thank you, George. <sighs> and then, here comes the exciting part. We're going to get to all of our M15 mythics. 
Yeah, I'll just pull them out really quickly. And also one that we traded for. But, um, yeah. Oops. I bumped your camera. Also something we're all really happy about. We got a Garouk Apex Predator. Which is really creepy because in the M15 game, he cuts off the head of the character you were in the M14 game. Okay, so we have our Soul of Innistrad. Four black. No, I'm sorry. Two black, four colorless. And Death Touch. Uh, I'm being blinded. Why? Why? Why, Lord? You piece of diarrhea. Okay. Three colorless, two black. Return up to three target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. So he's a 6-6 six, six with death touch. And his other ability is three colorless. Two black, exile, soul of Innistrad from your graveyard. Return up to three target card, reach your cards from your graveyard to your hand. And that's good, it's a returning card, happens a bunch. Got it. There's actually a better one, which is like restock, anyways. So we have our Garouk Apex Predator. Five colorless, one black, one green. Destroy target planeswalker. This is Bane of the Super Buddies. Like, murdering every single Super Buddy ever. And then his plus one is put a 3-3 three, three black black beast creature token with death touch onto the battlefield. His minus three is destroy target creature. You gain life equal to its toughness. His so minus eight is target opponent gets an emblem with whenever a creature attacks you, it gets plus five, plus five, and gains trample until end of turn. Like it, it's green and black, which I don't really play. George made a green and black deck pretty recently. It's pretty good. Maybe this would work well on it. I also know someone else who made a green and black deck. And we have Liliana Vest. Uh, Liliana. Three colorless, one, two black. Plus one, target player discards a card, minus two. Search your library for a card, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Yay, searching cards, black and blue. Really? Yep. Mine say, put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. And that's like that Liliana Rising Dead stuff, you control it, but, yeah, Liliana. It's okay, I mean, there are worse plane walkers, planes walkers, planes poopers, planes walkers. And then we have Upchuck, sorry, no. Folucaranos, World Eater. Two col Feline, whatever. You can tell me how to pronounce it. Two colorless, two green. Uh, okay. Is it loaded? It is not. Poop. Mom. Monstrosity X. You pay X colorless, X colorless, and one green. When this guy, World Eater, becomes. Monstrous, it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures the opponent's control. Each of those creatures dealt damage this way. Deals damage equal to its... Oh, hold on. De becomes monstrous, it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures your opponent's control. Each of those creatures dealt deals damage equal to its power to this guy. And that's kind of like, oh, I get to take out all your 1-1s. One Woo, 1-1s one are gone. Okay, 1-1s, one yay, yeah, they're gone. And then we have our shiny card, which is from... Not Scars of Mirrodin. I'm trying to remember what it's called. All the stuff with poison counters. And this is Shialdra, a whispering one. Five colorless, two black. Um, Swamp Walk, which is always good. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield. At the beginning of your opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. I like that. That's pretty much, oh, you get this out, you kind of win unless they can kill it with cards. Really good. Love it. Cool. Yay. Moving on, we have our Silver Hive Lord. One white, one blue, one black, one red, one green. 
Sliver creatures you control are indestructible. It's a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, 5-5, five five, whatever, cool. 5-5, five five, slivers are indestructible. Also, I should mention, um, we have... Wish that there, there. You can read their toughnesses. Um, I, I am sorry. I just can't. And then we have the soul of Zendikar. Four colorless, two green. It's reach. It's three colorless, two green. Put a three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. And then three colorless, two green exile soul of Zendikar from your graveyard. Put a three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Yeah, that's cool. Cause then you get like half of him from the graveyard, except it doesn't have any abilities. So I think it's pretty cool. And actually, I think that just about wraps it up. No, we have one more card. I just remembered. We found Primeval Bounty. I'm really happy about this. It's a great card. One green. Five colorless. It's an enchantment. I'm going to take a second for it to load. This is kind of... Poopy, but even if it isn't focusing, I'll just read it. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put a 3 3 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put a 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature you control. And whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 3 life. That's insanely good. Oh my god, I love it. It's awesome. Yes. Mwah. So good. So good. So good. And he just pulled the Grizzle brand in M15 on the Xbox. Anyway, so this has been Cooper MTG, and see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.